Ladies and gentlemen, you are connected to the earnings conference call of Electronic Smart India Limited. Please stay connected. The call will begin shortly. Participants, you are connected to the Electronic Smart India Limited earnings conference call. Please stay connected. The call will begin shortly. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Q3 and 9 months FY23 earnings conference call of Electronic Smart India Limited. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company, which are based on the beliefs, opinions and expectations of the company as on date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Karan Bajaj, CEO of Electronic Smart India Limited. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good evening and a warm welcome to everybody present on the call. Along with me, I have Mr. Prince Devarakonda, CFO and Strategic Growth Advisor and our Investor Relationship Advisor. We have uploaded our results and investor presentation for the quarter and nine months on the stock exchange and the company's website today. Hope everyone had a chance to go through the same. On 17th October 22, Electronic Smart India Limited got listed on BAC and NSE. It was a momentous day for all of us and thank you to all the stakeholders who have believed in us. In the nine months of FI23, we have opened 19 new stores. Currently, we have 122 stores, 109 of which are multi-brand stores and 13 are exclusive brand outlets. Out of 122 stores, 102 stores are leased, 12 are owned and 8 are partly owned and partly leased. As on date, we are present in 38 cities across 4 states and we have recently entered Kerala as well. 
We continue to focus on deepening our presence in the regions we operate in before venturing into the new market, which has led us to establish brand presence in Telangana and Andhra Pradesh markets. This enables the target customers to identify with our brands as well as with our product portfolio and aids our understanding of the market segment and the customer demand preferences. We believe that this approach also enables us to achieve significant market share and dominance in the market we operate in. We plan to continue to deepen our store network in Andhra Pradesh and Telangana and also gradually plan to expand our network in the new region that we enter, that is Delhi NCR, in pursuing our defined cluster focus of expansion strategy. We plan to open 26 MBOs in NCR, 22 MBOs and 10 exclusive brand outlets in Andhra Pradesh and Telangana in the coming future and adopt a methodological approach in evaluating and selecting locations. We believe that our local market knowledge, supply chain efficiencies and effective inventory management has enabled us to attain higher cost, competitiveness and consistent profitability. Our customized product assortment and comprehensive product portfolio enables us to achieve better visibility, brand recognition, deeper market penetration and increased customer base. We have nine large central located warehouse facilities now, which are backed by individual store areas to individual store storage areas uh, at uh, store level of varying sizes to cater to individual stores or a group of stores. Coming to Q3, we have delivered strong growth of 17% revenue year on year at rupees 1482 crores as, uh, compared to 1265 crores of last year with a 17% growth and a 32% year on year for the 9 months FI23 at 4,118 crores. On account of investments made to open new stores in the new geography, that is NCR, the company has increased investment in brand building, sales, marketing, and these investments have lowered the EBITDA margins, which are expected to improve as revenue throughput from new geographies increases. To conclude, I would like to say that after being, having established a leadership position in the Andhra Pradesh and Telangana retail electronic market, we have now entered Delhi NCR, where we plan to capture significant market share over the few years. In the southern region, we plan to expand our footprint in places like Vijayawada, Tenali, Guntur, Karnol, Nellore, and more tier 2, tier 3 cities in the existing clusters. By the cluster based distribution network, diversify product portfolio, strategically located logistic warehousing facilities, we overall will give us a competitive advantage in the existing market as well. With this, I request our CFO, Mr. Premchand Devarakonda, to update you on the financial performance of the company. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Karin sir. Good evening and warm welcome to all the participants. Now I would like to present the financial overview of Q3 of FY23. The total revenue for Q3 of FY23 stood at 1482 crores as against 1265 crores of Q3 FY22 with a growth of 17% year on year. For nine months of FY23, our revenue stood at 4118 crores as against 3119 crores of nine months FY22 with a growth of 32% year on year. EBITDA for Q3 of FY23 stood at 72.8 crores as against 77 crores of Q3 of FI22. There is a degrowth of 5% year on year. Whereas for 9 months of FI23, EBITDA stood at 245.2 crores as against 203.2 crores of the corresponding period of FI22. There has been a growth of 21% year on year. EBITDA margins for Q3 of FI23 stood at 4.9, whereas for nine months it is uh, it stood at six percent. As already mentioned by our CEO, our initial operating and branding expenses, while expanding our operations in the new territory that is NCR, has impacted these margins. Back for Q3 of FY23 stood at 21.9 crores, as against. 27.7 crores of Q3 FY22, FY22, a degrowth of 21% year on year. And for nine months of FY23, back to that 86.7 crores as against 68.6 crores of base period, uh, it had a growth of 26% year on year. 
annualized ROC and ROE for 9 months of FY23 stood at 12.7% and 9.8% respectively. The, <coughs> the working capital base as on 31st December stood at 49 days. The gross debt to equity is 0.4x and net debt to equity is at 0.1x which was a considerable improve, uh, which was considerably improved uh, on account of IPO. Our net debt to EBITDA stood at 0.66x. Our cash flow from operations before working capital changes for 9 months of FY23 stood at rupees uh, 244 crore, which is almost equivalent to our EBITDA. During the reporting period, our same store sales growth rate stood at 23.5%. During nine month period, the composition of sale of electronics and consumer durables has been 48% from large appliances, 37% from mobiles, and 15% from small appliances, IT products, and others. Out of the total sales, around 98% has been from retail segment, and top five brands contributed around 64% to our sales revenue. With this, I would like to open the floor for questions. Thank you, one and all. Thank you very much. <coughs> we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Krishna, Krishna Vind Kansara from Molecule Ventures PMS. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, thank you for taking my question. Uh, sir, my first question is regarding Delhi India. Uh, so if you could just give a brief about uh, the size and the number of stores opened in this new geography. Also, sir, what is the current run rate of sales coming from Delhi NCR? And uh, have we achieved break-even there? That is my first question. Thank you. Hi, Krishna. Uh, so Delhi NCR, as we talk, we are operating uh, 12 stores there. Uh, so eight stores were launched uh, on the 14th of August, and four other stores were launched on the 22nd of October. So right now, we would look at uh, uh, these stores performing uh, after uh, you know a certain gradual growth that we would be expecting. Uh, so post Diwali, we saw uh, these stores stabilizing a little bit, uh, and then the biggest season there is actually summer, which will start off from April. So Delhi, uh, on a whole, as a scenario right now, uh, so usually when we look at uh, 12 to 14 month break even in the existing market, uh, Delhi, we were assuming that Delhi would break even for us in uh, the period of 18 to 20 months, a little higher because it's a new geography and a new brand altogether. Uh, but uh, what we expect for a store to perform on a year one average uh, of the 25 plus crore, so the throughput on those lines are in track. And uh, once we churn the summer season, that is when we would be looking at uh, the initial growth of year one, year two, and year three, which will be higher, and then the store stabilizing and maturing after year four onwards. So that is the trajectory that we've seen in the past in the existing market, and we are hoping that uh, in the Delhi market also we would be on the same track. Sir, currently, uh, like what percentage of sales would be coming from the Delhi NCR store? So Q3, uh, the sales percentage that I've added up in Q3 was around 54 crores and for the first 9 months, uh, uh, because there were few weeks that, uh, of Q2 uh, also that added up, uh, so the first 9 months, the total revenue from uh, Delhi that is generated around 84 crores. Okay, okay, got it. Um, and sir, so uh, you recently opened uh, a few kitchen stores, specialized stores. So uh, currently, do they contribute to the top line? Uh, so kitchen stories uh, is a specialized uh, store format and uh, we have uh, uh, one store in Vishakhapatnam and two in Hyderabad and we have recently uh, taken over the, the operations of the Kerala store as well uh, but uh, the store that we are about to launch will be launching in the month of April. So technically today uh, the store is not operational in Kerala but we are booking sales there. 
Uh, but apart from that, the existing stores that we have in Hyderabad and uh, Vishakhapatnam, uh, they deliver uh, well a very minuscule set because it is a specialized store only for very high-end uh, categories of uh, uh, kitchen appliances, and it is a tie-up between the German modular kitchen brand Hecker. So for that reason, uh, these are all incubation stores where the margins, gross margins, are much higher than our regular uh, uh, stores, but. Uh, here we would look at uh, you know a lesser throughput. So the average stores would do around 15 to 18 crore rupees uh, for these uh, specialized store formats. Uh, 15 to 18 crore per store. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, got it, sir. And so how many uh, more such stores do you plan to open in the near future? Uh, so we're not we're not looking at opening more of these stores uh, because uh, this has to do with. Uh, you know the tie-up for the kitchens as well. So probably uh, one or two more stores in the coming few years. No, nothing on the plans, uh, you know, to expand the store format. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. And uh, so last question. So currently the contribution from mobiles is around close to 40 percent. So I just want to understand ki how has this contribution changed over the years. And can we easily expect that this contribution will remain in this range of 30 to 40 percent going forward also, or uh, in your opinion, will it increase? Uh, no. So what happens is basically like few months, uh, like if suppose it is uh, the quarter of summer, uh, where the cooling products like refrigerators, air coolers, and air conditioners uh, are a category which start delivering more. So automatically, mobile as a category, the penetration, the the percentage of share on this product mix would reduce. Whereas a uh, few months, you know, wait like December or November or post uh, summer, a uh, few of the months you would look at a higher share of these categories. Uh, so the lowest would be as low as 30 to 33 percent, and again the highest would be around 40 percent. So if we average it out on an annual basis for the nine months, it comes around 35 or 36 percent. So that is the number that we look at for a mobile uh, category uh, to contribute to the total revenue. Correct. Correct. Okay. And so are we seeing any demand slowdown in this segment? Sorry, can you repeat your question? Are we seeing any slowdown in demand in this uh, mobile segment? Mobile, no, not at all. In fact, uh, uh, we just are about to, uh, you know, uh, uh, launch the Samsung S23 as well, and we've been seeing quite a good demand coming in for that model. Uh, we saw good demand coming in for the 14 series of uh, Apple as well. In fact, suppose the 5G launch uh, completely, we were, we are expecting, you know, there will be a lot of churn in the next coming few quarters. Uh, which would uh, you know definitely uh, bring in a little more growth in this category in terms of uh, ASP going up because the 5G devices are going to be uh, on the higher uh, price segment. But one advantage that we have is we last six months we've been already selling major number of 5G devices, so we are already there uh, you know showcasing the 5G technology in our stores. So uh, you know we believe that uh, for the rollout of 5G completely in the existing markets that we are operating. Uh, we would look at uh, definitely a churn coming in for devices from 4G to converting to 5G devices. Okay, okay, correct. Got it. Uh, and sir, uh, so in your presentation, you mentioned that currently uh, just 12 owned stores, right? So uh, how will this number move going ahead? Like, will we be opening more such owned stores, or uh, will those be on these only? Yeah, so uh, so it is more like a 80-20 split right now, whereas uh, 80 properties are approximately leased. Around 20 properties, around 12 properties are completely owned by us, and 8 properties are partly owned, uh, which means that if suppose we have two stores in that building, one is owned and one is leased, uh, where we are operating uh, the stores, uh, and out of that, uh, 7 to 8 stores are what we actually decided to buy in Delhi NCR. That was a major investment that we did in the last 12 months. and. Uh, out of which three stores are operational, five more stores of the property that we have bought are yet to get operational in Delhi, which will get operational in the next third. So uh, going forward, uh, it is going to be a mix, you know, majority or mix of lease out properties uh, and uh, very few selective locations we will be buying out. That Delhi expansion was planned on uh, buying out uh, the bigger ones uh, and we've already done the buying out in Delhi. So we don't see a major uh, requirement of buying out properties in the existing markets. Okay, correct. Got your point. Um, yeah, that's all from my side. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Participants who wishes to ask a question may press star and one. 
The next question is from the line of Deepak Botha from Sapphire Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Ed? Yeah, uh, thank you very much, uh, sir, for the opportunity. So I just wanted to understand, I mean, uh, you mentioned that uh, this ma margin decline uh, this quarter was because of the increased investment. So is it possible uh, to to kind of quantify uh, the investment that we would have done in brand building or sales and marketing in this this particular quarter? Yes, 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 uh, Deepak. So Deepak, uh, one major change that uh, we did uh, compared to the last year was four and a half crores of cashback that we had paid out for uh, all the financing and the cashback that that we do on the floor during the festival period. So that was a major spend that we did of four and a half crores. And uh, if you look historically, uh, what is the marketing spend that we did? That was another major spend that would include the daily launch and uh, all the uh, lucky draws and all the other offers that we do. Uh, so that was two major spends that we did. And we were all calculated and Delhi was expected uh, to burn a little initially because uh, it takes a little time for the stores to stabilize. But uh, what I can say is that uh, uh, in terms of what our expectations were uh, in uh, you know stabilizing the stores, uh, I think we are on track on that, uh, doing that. And once we open few more stores in Delhi and uh, you know stabilize there, uh, the marketing cost again would be in hand with our sales revenue. So we are not expecting anything out of the box uh, to go wrong uh, in Delhi right now. So everything under control there. Uh, so the spend majorly would be pertaining to uh, the cashback of four and a half crores approximately and the marketing spend. So that would directly affect our EBITDA. So what would that total be? So 4.5 crores is the cashback and the daily, uh, daily launch incremental investment would be how much? Sir, uh, only daily, daily incremental and plus there was an incremental in our uh, spend in uh, the tier 2, tier 3 cities in Andhra and Telangana as well. So uh, the bifurcation would be given to you. I'll ask the, uh, the team to send you the bifurcation again. But the total amount was around 10 crore rupees spent between the existing market and Delhi, uh, which was an incremental cost during that quarter. The total marketing spend is about 7 crores, right? Sorry? Uh, t this total sales and marketing spend is about 7 crores. Out of that, about Delhi launch would be uh, would be included there. Uh, no, no, it would be much higher. It is not 7 crores. It is much higher. Total spend was around 40. 40, 45 crores. Uh -huh. Yeah, for the nine months. Okay. No, I was yeah. just uh, uh, trying to understand the third quarter, not the nine months. Third quarter, what, what the spend was? Quarter was 22 crores. 22 crores. So yeah. that is our marketing spend, right? And that would include our daily launch. Yes. And, and how much was this spend in second quarter? Second quarter, uh, the spend was around 10 crore rupees. So incremental, we can say that 12 crores would have come, right? I mean, uh, uh, on a quarter and quarter basis. Yeah. Uh, so we have 10 crores, you have to that was the incremental spend that we did. And, and addition to that would be 4.5 crores cashback, right? That, that would be additional. Spend. 10 crores of cashback was. Okay, fair enough. was actually not, uh, we didn't carry out any cashback last year for the same period. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Fair enough. And so we didn't uh, come out uh, with cashback. And majorly this marketing, even for Andhra and Telangana stores, because that is where uh, we not stabilized and the stores are uh, maturing. Uh, so we have started spending uh, in those territories as well. So, and these uh, tie to markets and all are very heavy on vernacular newspapers majorly. So that is the only major medium for us and theaters. And these are two expensive mediums. So we don't have too many options in terms of marketing because we have voting, radio, in the tier 2, tier 3 cities. So the major spend goes through uh, on marketing goes through either theaters or through newspapers. So these are, both of them are quite heavy in terms of uh, the money is required uh, for advertising that region. Fair enough, I understood. And um, so, uh, this margin front, I mean, uh, we have been always been saying that 7% is a kind of a steady state EBITDA margin for us, right? Now this quarter was around 5%. So, uh, so I mean, um, this journey towards 7%, uh, uh, would you expect that to kind of achieve in FI24 as a whole? I mean, um, some understanding on that would help. Yeah, so, so Deepak, if you look at the nine month number, uh, it is uh, uh, around 6%. So we don't see a drastic uh, drop there, number one. Number two, uh, FI23, Q4, also I would say that, uh, you know, uh, because we've already passed six weeks uh, under the Q4 quarter and we know uh, significantly how the product mix is going and how the demand for cooling products are coming in. And then you can check historically how your Q4 would deliver. So we are on track on uh, achieving the uh, the numbers that we had uh, given out in the market earlier in terms of our estimations. And uh, Q, FI24 also, 
you know, we are expecting uh, uh, the stores in Andhra Telangana would mature with the opening new stores as well. Delhi also would be stabilizing by Q2 after the April, May, June, summer period. So we were expecting uh, that you know, things would be uh, in line for FI24 as well. Okay, so fourth quarter as well as FI24, we are expecting that 7% EBITDA margin band. Would that be a fair uh, to uh, kind of understand? Sir, uh, I would not say that, uh, so I'm not exactly pointing out a certain number, but what I would say was it would be in line of what our expectations are and uh, there would not be a drastic, uh, you know, jump or, uh, you know, high or a low in that number, but uh, we would definitely, uh, you know, try to achieve, because it would depend on the product mix as well. There's a cooling product like AC refrigerator and uh, air coolers would give us a higher gross margin and that would automatically help us, uh, you know, uh, increase the number. Fair enough. I, I understand. My last question is on your revenue. I mean, we have been talking about maybe what 20-25% revenue CAGR, right? Uh, I mean, two to three years. Uh, so we are holding on to that? Yes. Yeah, so if you look at the first nine month number, we are upwards of 32% growth. Uh, though FI, uh, so the Q3 of FI23 was at 17%. Uh, but uh, post Diwali, if you see the markets were down real bad. But we were still able to achieve uh, a good uh, throughput during December as well. So, you know, uh, and we got confident on how the operations stabilizing across the new geographies also. So I think uh, we uh, on track for that as well. On track for that. Okay. That's it from my side, sir. Uh, all the way. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Samir Gupta from IIFL Securities. Please go ahead. Hi, sir, and thanks for taking my question. First question uh, is the SSS growth of 10.5% this quarter that you have clogged. So we are basically witnessing a slowdown across consumer discretionary categories, especially after Diwali. So just yes. trying to understand this 10 and a half SSS growth in that context, uh, is it because uh, like uh, after October the sales for you are anyways very low in this quarter uh, and uh, that is why you are not seeing any slowdown brunt or uh, is it that you have uh, bugged the trend and performed really well? Uh, so yes, the 10% approximate sales for growth has come in for Q3 alone, but that has not been there for Q2 and Q1. So I mean even Q4 also, uh, we would look at a uh, different trajectory, uh, but definitely yes, it was a major slowdown. So usually we would see a slowdown for a couple of weeks after Diwali, but then this time that uh, you know got a uh, little more delayed for another three or four weeks. So it you know went up till almost December first week, but then we were averaging out uh, uh, you know what numbers that we would do. Uh, so that that brought down the uh, FAG as well during that period. But then uh, I don't see. You know that one of incidences happening during that period, but we are back on track again on Q4. So we would see a much higher SAG coming in uh, in the future as well. Uh, just a follow up on this. So uh, are you seeing uh, any sort of you know see SSS goes why why can be misleading because there is an Omicron in the base and. Uh, all those anomalies are there, but on a sales per store, uh, something like you know, uh, a, a metric which is uh, which is better to track. Are you seeing uh, uh, any any better traction in the fourth quarter, or uh, things are more or less similar? So, uh, uh, see, there was a different trajectory coming in for uh, Q4 because uh, we've already passed 60, so we know what is happening. And most of the stores, so there was nothing additionally done apart from the Delhi stores as an expansion. So the SSG eventually uh, would be coming in for the majority of them would be coming for the mature stores. So uh, you know, so we we are quite happy with what they're delivering, and we see a performance coming in from a mature stores as well as for the new stores. So once the new stores stabilize, we'll definitely looking at higher SSG coming in uh, in the near future. Got it, sir. Second question is uh, this uh, five percent margin that you have reported, and uh, my sense is that a large part of this is because of the Delhi twelve stores that you have added during the year. Uh, now, out of the nineteen stores that you have added, twelve are in Delhi, and you just mentioned that uh, a Delhi store typically will take eighteen to twenty months for break even versus the normal twelve month trajectory for your other stores. Now, with the growth construct being similar uh, uh, going uh, you know forward, uh, that two third of the additions will be in Delhi. How are you so confident that uh, you'll get back to the six and a half percent EBITDA margin trajectory? I mean, just by the math of this uh, low, uh, bigger break-even period for Delhi, should actually skew the margin to the lower side, right? Uh, but for me, that would even uh, uh, see. Uh, they no, definitely initially there might be a drop of a percentage or two in the gross margin levels in Delhi operations. 
but then uh, not necessarily that the Delhi is contributing to a much higher number of revenue coming in from there initially. So, uh, I imagine for it. So, yeah, so, so and Sami, one more thing is that uh, the product mix in Delhi initially today, when you compare to our existing market, where we see a 35% uh, plus uh, mobile phone uh, contribution, which is one of the lowest uh, gross margin categories, with 7% coming in from IT, uh, whereas we have uh, the larger products selling better in Delhi today for us. And uh, we've not even completed the summer season, which is one of the largest contributing seasons in Delhi as a region. So only after we complete one season of summer or one complete year of uh, different season of all four quarters, that is where we'll be able to, you know, uh, completely in depth tell you and uh, analyze and tell you the complete detail of that. It is too early for us to comment. It has hardly been five and a half months of operations for eight stores and uh, three and a half months for four stores. Uh, so it will be too early for us to comment. But what we can look at right now in Delhi as an overall. Uh, 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 strategy is that uh, we are able to achieve a certain uh, decent throughput for us to be on the path of achieving 25 crore plus for every store. So that is more important for us initially where, you know, the extraction is there. And then, and it is not a burn per se, but it is an extraction that we are looking at right now. And then it will eventually stabilize and then create a uh, market presence for itself. So that is more important for us initially. Sorry, I didn't get that. For sales per store on an annual basis in Delhi, that's what you are targeting? Yes. So whenever we open a new store, Sami, so historically uh, what we look at is whenever we open a new store, uh, how we look at the calculation of break-even is that if it's an existing market, we look at a 30 crore throughput for year one, uh, then you know, gradually increasing in year two and then year three and then stabilizing or maturing after year four onwards. So usually it takes around four years for it to mature, but in the existing market uh, at a 30 crore number, we would break even between 12 to 14 months. That is the number historically what we've delivered. So looking at that, uh, Delhi, because we're a new competitive market, uh, we uh, position ourselves at 25 crores uh, for year one, so that is the number that we look at. And because of the, the throughput being 25 crores, uh, we look at a uh, higher uh, break-even period, which is around 18 to 20 months. So that is why these numbers are given out, and these are all conservative numbers. But on track, like few of the stores might achieve that much sooner, few of the stores might take a month or two later. So that is, uh, but in line with uh, what uh, we would be looking at. Understood. Understood. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, that's Thank all. Thank you, Samir. Thank you. Participants who wishes to ask a question may press star and one. The first question is from the, the next question is from the line of Rakesh from HDFC Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Just want to understand this uh, other expenses line here slightly better. This is roughly about 21 crores increase on a quarter on quarter basis and roughly about 22 crores if I look at your uh, third quarter last year, right? If you can help us yeah. understand, you know, how much of this is, uh, I mean, in terms of breakup uh, marketing, what has contributed to this increase? Uh, maybe you know uh, that will help us understand your margin profile slightly better. So, uh, so I'll give you a detailed breakup on this. So, the the major uh, numbers that we looked at uh, with the uh, expenses have increased. Uh, a few of them are directly proportionate to the uh, sales itself, uh, which are sales promotions like the dealer finance charges, credit card charges and all, which uh, have increased around 7 crore rupees. Uh, and uh, marketing expenses have increased uh, uh, a little bit. Uh, maintenance, power and fuel, because you added up new stores, so electricity cost, uh, fuel cost for generators and all that, that increased a little bit, uh, that is around uh, 1.7 crores. Uh, other expenses, uh, it would include all of these other things uh, uh, like uh, sales promotion, DBD, credit card charges, cashback offers, all of that put together has brought in the major uh, increase. Out of which 50% of the major increase is only coming from the marketing and advertising front. So 50% is the extra spend you have done. Uh, would that be a fair of how the cost is working out? And this so around, uh, sir, if I give you the first nine month numbers, so around 20, 28 crores approximately was the marketing spend for the first nine months, which is increased directly to 45 crores. So this would include the, you know, the lucky draws, the one crore cash price, the cars, the 50 lakh cash price that we started in Delhi also. So from 28 crores, uh, directly jump of 45 crores to 45 crores uh, was uh, the in marketing itself. And the sales promotion cost from, uh, say, uh, 71 crores increased to uh, 106 crore rupees. So that was another major spend around uh, 30 crores is uh, what was directly uh, proportionate to the sales uh, because credit card charges are now customers, cash transactions have reduced a lot, customers are buying everything on credit card, debit card, so every transaction there is a MDR charge that the bank charges around 1.2%, uh, you know, then all the cashbacks on the UPI payments and all of that, so all of this includes under the sales promotion. 
uh, even the paper financing cost uh, that we bear, uh, which is the interest cost, the dealer buy down cost, so all of these costs uh, have directly, uh, you know, gone up in the expense report. No, so can, can you have us in this slightly better uh, in the sense that what is the cost which is, let's say, not proportional to your sales, which has gone higher because of which the margin is looking lower and, and what would be the normal trajectory going forward? So if I look at, let's yeah. say, your cost, right, as a percentage of sales, your other expenses as a percentage of sales has been roughly about 5.6 to 5.8% uh, third quarter or the, or the previous quarter. And currently it's sitting at 6.3%. There's about 50 basis point or 70 basis point increase uh, if I look at it on a like-to-like -like basis, year-on-year -year basis, right? Uh, what has contributed to the 70 basis point of, uh, you know, incremental spend? Because that will not be linked to the proportion of the sale. Correct. Not 100% not of it, but uh, different heads or the smaller portion, but the majority of them is what I told you. Uh, I just uh, ask Prem sir or CFO to get in detail with you on that right away on the call and explain it to you. So, Prem sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, power and fear is one of the major expenditures. Uh, that is, uh, for the nine months period, uh, this, is, this has been 0.69% of the revenue during the current financial year, as against 0.6% of the previous financial year. Okay. Then, uh, another major expenditure is the maintenance. So that includes the housekeeping as well as watch and watch. So this has gone up by, uh, point, I mean, it is uh, during the current uh, nine month period of the current financial year, it is 0.66% as against 0.63% uh, of the previous year of the revenue. Then advertisement has already been mentioned. So it has been 1.19% of the revenue as against 0.95% of the previous financial year. Okay. Then we have uh, business promotion expenses. This is nothing but the uh, about that lucky draws and other uh, uh, launching activities which, right. had, which we carry out. So that has been 0.22% during the current nine month period as compared to 0.09% uh, of the previous financial year. So these are, uh, and uh, apart from that, sales promotion expenses, which has been 2.81% during the current nine month period, which has been 2.46% during the previous financial year. Okay. Now, so yeah, this is as a person level. Going forward, how should we look? these three big head items, advertisement and promotions, business promotions and the uh, sales and marketing, right? All of these costs have gone higher in this quarter. Uh, so what I'm trying to understand is going forward, what would be normal trajectory? Is the is the, uh, the third quarter, what you've seen uh, last year or uh, this year is, is going to be a normal trajectory going forward? Or do you expect these numbers to come down as a percentage of sales? That's right, sir. If the, once the store throughput improves in uh, uh, Delhi and Seattle, Delhi. so the, obviously these costs uh, as a percentage of sales will come down. Okay. So in that scenario, I mean, how, how will you achieve, uh, you know, 7% of the margin in the 24? Because if uh, you have uh, uh, rental, ho gaya hai, uh, manpower, ho gaya hai, the advertising uh, expenses which are directly proportional to the sales report per store, uh, right now uh, a lot of the rental costs that we proportion for example or the advertising costs or sales promotion, all of these uh, work for a limited number of, so say for example if I am doing a 50 lakh rupee draw next uh, year in the same quarter, I would have 25 stores in Delhi or 20 stores in Delhi, would, would the number of spent would or the number of advertising that you would do in the same quarter would remain the same, but would get divided or the increase of stores would give us a higher throughput or a higher revenue overall. So in that proportion it would definitely come down, uh, but initially uh, because it is Diwali and Dasir it was a period during that uh, quarter, we had to, you know, we have the new market players, we had to, you know, be at par with advertising uh, uh, with the larger players, so we could not step back on that. So that is all, this is all calculated initially when we started our operations in Delhi. So Hyderabad, and Nepi, Telangana and uh, uh, the existing market, uh, there was not an incremental uh, uh, increase in advertising. Uh, just to give you a number there, the proportion that we spend on advertising and uh, uh, you know, all other aspects of marketing was definitely much lower than uh, what our sales percentage would be. So, uh, 
uh, that is in line. So same thing would happen in Delhi, but not uh, probably this quarter. Probably next uh, year in the same quarter, we would definitely look at a similar trend with a higher throughput coming out from that market. Understood. Uh, and one last question, uh, you know, what is the seasonality in your uh, business in this, uh, especially in terms of you know gross margin? So this year, this quarter, gross margin is 13 percent. Uh, last year, same time was 13.3 percent, but that was also, I believe, was one of the lowest quarter uh, during the four quarters. How should we generally think of uh, gross margin seasonality going forward for the four quarters? Which quarter is would be higher typically at what range so that we get some sense of what is the normalized margin for the year? You would still maintain. I would assume that you are still guiding 14 percent gross margin for the year at the moment. Yeah, so that is sir, uh, maybe uh, the highest grossing uh, category or the product category that we sell is AC and cooler. So this season AC cooler became up automatically, uh, you know, we had a higher gross margin during that period. But uh, summer would again or the weather would again play a very important role for us. So for example, uh, because this year we would uh, in uh, say Q, uh, or say 24, Q1, we would look at uh, a longer uh, summer for us because Delhi also would add up few numbers coming in. Not very big number, but some numbers coming in from that region as well because the summer is elongated there and would go as long as June, July. So if you are lucky enough with the weather support, sir, you are able to deliver a higher throughput for AC cooler as a category. Uh, so we would look at the quarter where uh, the cooling products would give us a higher GP. So blended GP for those quarters would definitely be higher uh, if you look at uh, uh, historically data also. Number one. Number two. Uh, Diwali or festival period definitely on paper would give you a higher margin, but then again that is one of the only periods where the discounting becomes the highest as well because it is the most competitive, uh, you know, cutthroat uh, market uh, that happens uh, from customer point of view where you know everybody's got an ad, everybody's running an offer. So though you get an extra margin or an extra benefit during the festive period from the brands to negotiate better. But then eventually it boils down to discounting that on the floor, uh, you know. So uh, otherwise, uh, uh, cooling product category, AC cooler refrigerator would be the highest grossing product category uh, at any time of the year for us. Okay, thank you very much and all the best. Thank you, Rakesh. Yeah. The next question is from the line of Tushar, Tushar Sarda from Athena Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah, th thank you very much. Uh, uh, you mentioned that Delhi will achieve break even at around 25 crore uh, sales per uh, store. So, if you can explain the store level economics in Delhi and also for the Delhi cluster, how the economics would work out. Because some of the costs like advertisement marketing would be common. So, you know, if you can just broadly explain, that would be very helpful. Uh, okay. So, sir, if I've understood your correct uh, question correctly. Uh, so Delhi uh, market, though the market size of Delhi is much bigger than our existing market that we've been in, so that was one of the reasons that we entered that market. 25 crores was a very conservative number that we calculated our break even hand uh, because obviously you didn't want uh, you know anything to go out of hand because the margin that we control is not in our hand you know but uh, the the expense is what majorly we can control so we didn't want to take a very high rental or a very high uh, manpower cost strategy there in Delhi. So we want to make sure that everything is in line till the time the bank stabilizes there, and then we can, you know, look at uh, avenues of increasing our margins in that region. So right now, 25 crores is what we look at uh, for the delivery happening in year one, and uh, our costs are all calculated against that. So that is why we calculated a, a you know, an 18 month uh, break even period where uh, margins of gross margins, which are 13, 14 percent, are lower to 11, 12 percent also in year one. Uh, we still never able to uh, deliver a break even in 18 to 20 months. That is the calculation, sir. That would increase the capex as, the, as well as the opex, sir. So, what is your store cost in Delhi for individually uh, per store? Roughly, should we assume two crores a year, three crores a year, including rentals and salaries and you know other uh, overhead? Uh, yeah, yes, sir. So, you are talking about the gross profit uh, per store there uh, in Delhi? Yeah, yeah, store contribution. Yeah, it will be, it will be, sir. But again, as I told you that uh, only after we complete the summer season, because AC and cooler are actually a longer period season, uh, only after we understand that uh, period once, uh, because we have not uh, gone through that period in Delhi, and the cooling products being one of the highest grossing product activities for us. So once we go to that churn, we see how the market is reacting, we see how the competitive the market is, whether we are still able to uh, deliver a higher, much higher gross margin that we would do in Hyderabad or AT and Telangana, how the competitive scenario there is. Uh, those things would only play out after the end of uh, Q1 
one or Q2 and FI24. So once that is done, once we do a complete churn, uh, your churn, uh, we'll be able to, you know, understand the market better and then comment uh, better on that market, sir. So uh, you have 12 stores now in Delhi, right? The 12 stores, the 13th is uh, soft launch is done for that store in Noida Sector 18, uh, where the official launch will be happening in the next couple of weeks, sir. Okay. And how much do you plan to spend on marketing next year in Delhi? Uh, so Delhi marketing plan uh, would be uh, in line with the revenue that we would generate. So it would be around uh, in the line of 10 to 12 crore rupees. Sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kishan, sir. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Akshat Mehta from Samiksha Capital. Please go ahead. Mr. Hello. Mehta, please go ahead with your question. Yeah. So, uh, my question was on the uh, your, was on your expenses on your operating expenses. As you said that your advertising expenses is around you know ten to twelve crores on average, and this quarter also your ad, uh, ad expenses have been around twenty two crores. So that that forms around you know one point five to two percent of your overall revenues. But if you look in the in past data in twenty twenty one twenty two. You know, ad expense has formed more than three percent. So how how uh, I mean, why is there declining trend in advertising expenses, or uh, you know, is there is there because of Delhi that we are spending less amount there, or what is the scenario there? Uh, Mr. Nath, I didn't understand your question. Can you repeat it once again, please? Uh, my my question was that if you the numbers that you've given right now for quarter two, quarter three, your your ad expenses in those quarters it forms around one point five to two percent of your overall revenues for the quarter. Right. But in the past few years, you know, twenty twenty one and twenty two, your ad expenses in your annual report have been more than three percent of your revenues. So why is there a fall in you know advertising expense as a percentage of your revenues going forward? I mean. Uh, is there is this something because of the Delhi side that we're spending less in terms of uh, as a percentage of revenues marketing in Delhi, or what what is the trend here? No, uh, Mr. Mehta. In fact, uh, uh, the advertising expense in the previous uh, historical years have been around 0.8.9%. Uh, in fact, uh, the COVID years we were uh, spending uh, so one of the lowest amounts in advertising. So if you look at an advertising cost uh, for FI22 versus the revenue, it should be around 0.8.9%. Uh, I don't know, could be some ad added under uh, the FI22 number where you're seeing a 3% advertising spend. Whereas, uh, as you correctly said, now because of Delhi being added, the marketing spend from 0.8.9% would be looking at upwards of 1.3 to 1.4% for this and, uh, for financial year. Okay. You must have added sales promotion to our advertisement because sales promotion is not our advertisement. The sales promotion expenses include uh, de dealer buy down charges and other uh, incidental expenses. Okay. Okay, so what would be a quantum of that in these two quarters if you can share that? So other, uh, Mr. Mehta, if I tell you like FI22 for the first nine months we spend around 27.8 uh, crore rupees on advertising versus for the first nine months of this year we spent 45.1 crore rupees. So you can see a drastic change in advertising uh, and promotion uh, compared to uh, nine months of that uh, uh, FI22 and nine months of FI23. If I give you a quarter on quarter number, Q3 of FI22 we spent uh, 16 crore rupees versus Q3 FI23 we spent 22.3 crore only on marketing and advertising. No, no, I was asking for sales promotion. Huh? So, the sales promotion, sales promotion from 71 crores in FI22 for the first nine months, it went up to 106 crores uh, for the first nine months of FI23. And this is directly proportionate to the credit card, debit card, financing, paper financing, charges that we bore, uh, bear at the uh, store level for customers. Okay, okay. And uh, my second question was on your uh, gross margin. Uh, I mean, your, your gross margin in the past, you know, for like four years, it, it was 15.1 and around FI19. From there, it, uh, it has come down to 13.7 FI22, and now it is uh, in the in the uh, first three quarters also it is coming down to 13%. So, what is you know, driving that reduction in gross margins currently? Uh, the, uh, so definitely yes, we were also a little surprised by 0.5% on a uh, Q3 number uh, because uh, uh, right after Diwali we saw a major drop in the revenues for the first couple of weeks uh, which we had to take an impact on. Uh, so so how 0.5% uh, margin in our books would directly 
Hence, the bottom line is because your other fixed expenditure remains the same. You know, your rental, the manpower cost, the cost of inventory, borrowing cost, and all remain the same. But uh, that 0.5 percent also would impact us. Uh, uh, you know, in terms of the number looking uh, uh, much higher or lower. Uh, whereas historically in 1918, 17, or that kind of period, the contribution coming from IT and mobile sales were quite low. Whereas IT was never higher than in FY 19. Also, IT contribution was on more than 3 percent. IT contribution today stands at 7 percent, which is one of the lowest gross margin categories. And even mobile phones, for that matter. So mobile phones all stand at 35, 36 percent today. Uh, so if you look at the first nine months number, uh, the blended the gross margin level. Uh, Look at uh, much higher compared to uh, you know the Q3 uh, gross margin level. So once uh, we cross in uh, the Q4 period, which is uh, Jan Feb March, uh, when summer setting early, uh, we will look at the cooling products to start delivering the higher margins. So that is why we are uh, a little confident on how the Q4 would turn up and that would eventually help us deliver uh, the number for the annual number for. Uh, so this is as I understand, this is primarily on account of the change in mix, your product mix that is. That is seen more towards a bit towards mobile as well as towards IT and other small appliances, correct? Andy, 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 Mr. Mehta, if I'm getting it right, yeah, yeah, that is okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Preet Jain from Blue Jersey Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thank you. Hello. Hello. My first question is: so How sorry, is the response from Delhi NPR business. category? Are we facing any major competition there? Sorry, sir. Uh, we cannot hear. Can you repeat your question, sir? Hi, sir. How is the response from Delhi NPR category? Are we facing any major competition there? So, Delhi NPR definitely is one of the most competitive markets in the country, uh, and. Uh, There is no fun in not competing in the market if you're there. Uh, so uh, we are getting, but it is not like a backlash that we can't maintain or we have to undercut a lot. But it is quite a reasonable uh, uh, market there uh, because uh, you have to look at expenses also uh, because the retail uh, scenario is a little different there compared to other southern or western organized markets. So uh, you're competing a lot with brand stores, with a lot of mom and pop stores. So you have to make sure that you know uh, you can. Uh, uh deliver a better throughput and the margin definitely initially yes uh, we were expecting it to be uh, you know 10 basis point lower than what we would expect in our existing market but then once we cover up all the season once we understand the market once we understand the preferences of the customers then that is where we will we can uh, our strategy and you know for the future we should be ready for it yes sir and sir my second question is can you provide us the segmental margin profile of large appliances small appliances and mobile segment yeah sure uh, so uh, mobile phones give us a margin of around uh, 9% uh, large appliances uh, would give us a, so if i buy for television television would give us around 17% uh, washing machine refrigerators would give us around 18% uh, acs and coolers would give us around 20% that is the historical uh, Uh, margins that we generate out of uh, the gross margins that we generate out of each category. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Jain. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This will be the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. So I would like to thank uh, everybody, uh, uh, you know, for joining the call today. And uh, uh, I just want to give a little flavor of how things are working out. So the uh, revenue that we generated for Q3, uh, though we had a little downfall, the market was a little slower in November and December, but we were able to achieve, uh, you know, uh, our projected numbers for Q3. And the first nine months, uh, we are on track. Uh, and January and February, we've already crossed January and three uh, two weeks of February. So. Uh, Q4 is also in the hand and control with us in terms of what is happening, and we're quite confident that once uh, the summer sets in a little early, March also should be a good month for us, and eventually we would be able to deliver a, uh, you know, a suggested number that we had given out uh, during the RIP road shows uh, going forward as well. So thank you everybody, uh, and I would like to thank uh, you know our panel on the call. Uh, thank you everybody. Thank you. On behalf of Electronic Smart India Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect here.